Welcome to Congruity Mondays. Man, it's been a while since I said that. Now, meteors have been in a ton of films, and we want to try our luck at making meteors purely in After Effects with no third-party plugins. And so, in light of our newest short film, Summer's End, we wanted to show you how you too can make digital meteors rain down on your neighborhood. Yeah, so anyhow. The first step is to film your scene. Now, I have two tips for this, which I didn't follow either of them, but, um... You can. Number one is to keep your camera locked down. Now this makes it so much easier to comp in the meteors because you don't have to do any motion tracking. If you do decide to have a moving shot with meteors in it, make sure you have visible points of interest for the camera track and also keep your footage as smooth as possible. The less shake, the easier the track. The second tip is if you film a wide shot with some sort of skyline, try and film in an area where there's no tree line. It's so much harder to film around or behind the trees, so save yourself some pain and film with a clear horizon. Again, I did neither of these, so I just had to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. That needs to be closed. Now for the meteors. With our footage, let's open up After Effects and place it in the timeline. If you do have a moving shot, then you're going to have to motion track your footage first. And that's what I did. I motion tracked the footage using the chimney as my point of interest. And thankfully, I used a gimbal to smooth the motion as much as possible, so it was a pretty clean track. I applied the tracking data to a null object and then tested out the track with a black solid. I personally like to test out all my tracks with some random image, just so that before I do any major work, I know my track is perfect. Now, one thing I had to do in Summer's End was sky replacement because the entire backdrop was so overexposed that the meteors would just blend in. I did the same thing in the opening sketch. I grabbed the sky photo off Google and layered it on top of the footage. Then I masked and feathered the bottom edges so that the sky stayed, well, in the sky. And then I messed around with different blend modes to see what looked best and the multiply blend mode worked so well that I didn't even have to roto the trees. Once that was linked to the null for the tracking, I started work on the meteors. Now you can totally tweak these settings to however you like, whatever fits your film, but this is how we did it. Create a new black solid and put CC particle systems on top of it. You'll end up with this sparkler water fountain type looking thing. Change your birth rate to 16 and longevity to 3.6. Change the animation to jet sideways and then velocity to 0.2 gravity to 1.3 and resistance to 27.7. Under the particle tab, change the type to a faded sphere, birth size to 0.10, death size to zero, and size variation to 100%. Now for the colors, you can choose whatever you like, but we decided to choose a white and a pale blue. Then add the glow effect and change the glow threshold to 90%, radius to 65, and intensity to 2.1. Change the glow colors to A and B colors. Now they can be whatever color you want it to be. It could be purple, it could be green, whatever fits your story. But for us, we decided to go with a yellow and an orange. Then finally, add a directional blur to make it look like it's in motion and voila you have a meteor you can also adjust the size and the width of the meteor in the producer tab of the particle effect after that i rotated and placed the meteor into the scene where i wanted it and then i was on to the lens flare i made another black solid and then placed the default after effects lens flare on it now the reason you put it on a black solid instead of like an adjustment layer or another piece of footage is so that you can add other effects like a blur or a color distortion to the lens flare itself and not have it affect any of the other layers below. And that's what we call a pro tip. So after placing the effect on the solid, I set the blending mode to screen and place the flare center on the tip of the meteor. I added a Gaussian blur to the solid to blend it in with the footage and then track the flare into the rest of the scene. And that's it, all the major steps of putting a meteor into your film. I added a few other stock assets like a lens texture and I also duplicated the meteor effect to make different sized meteors to add some depth and detail. With all of that together, we had our final shot. All in all, I think the visuals in both Summer's End and the sketch are pretty convincing. If I did end up doing any other work with meteors, I would definitely tweak a little bit to find a more realistic look or just somehow to make it better. But for now, I think this is pretty good. But that's it for today. All the links where you can find us on other platforms are down below, as well as the links to the Adobe products that we use. If you aren't subscribed, feel free to do so if you want and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other filmmaking goodies. And until next time, make sure to keep it simple and stay creative.